so here we've got the movie with the mouth added. Now you can see the uh, little open that we've added on the jump, which adds a nice little touch. Uh, so yeah, let's keep going. Uh, the next thing I want to kind of finish off the core of his body. So we're not going to get to the tail yet. Um, I just want to get the uh, overlap and kind of the stretch in his ears uh, to echo the main uh, motion that we've put on the upper body. So let's jump in and take a look at the ears. So let me uh, grab everything here. We'll go to frame one. Uh, so I've got no animation on his ears at all, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of them at once. Uh, I've kind of animated this mostly in profile, so I don't have to worry about uh, some extra kind of rotation channels here. But I'm just going to skip through um, and literally just keep on the same keys that I've got. You can see them all down here. Um, there's not a ton of them, but it really does describe the motion that I want. So if I can kind of just flip through those main keys that I have and position the ears in a way where it feels like they're overlapping and kind of stretching and squashing appropriately, um, they should work with the rest of the animation that I've got. So as they come down here, uh, I might stretch them just a tiny bit. And then going into this next key, I definitely want them to overlap. His head is pushing forward. I want the ears to feel like they're going back against that. So I get that nice sense of overlap there. Uh, and then on this one, they probably haven't caught in all the way up. So they're still gonna be coming back um, or coming from the back and kind of overlapping forward, I should say. Um, by the time I'm on this frame, they're probably coming forward. Uh, on this one, they can still be forward. So you can see I'm only worried about the frames that I have keys on. I'm using the period uh, and the comma key to skip uh, just to my keys. So I'm not going to put any extra keys on them right now. I just want to see how keeping them on the keys that I've got can make them uh, react to uh, the existing animation. So here, they're probably going to rotate back. And at this point, uh, as he's coming down, I could probably start to get a little bit of stretch in them as well. So they're going to stretch there. This next frame, I could probably get away with a lot of stretch. I want to keep them rotated back um, and maybe just get kind of a cheated frame where they really stretch. Let's see what we can get away with there. That's a single, you can see down here, it's a single frame of him coming down. So stretch, maybe give it a little bit on the frame before. That might be a little bit too much. Let's start right there. Uh, the next frame, we'll just have them coming back to normal volume a little bit, still rotated back. Uh, the head's kind of still leaning back, so I want the ears to be back so that as his head kind of reverses and comes back forward, you feel the ears overlap against them. So here, we'll keep them back. That frame, they kind of throw forward, which works. They're going to stay going forward as the head starts to pull back. And this one, I can probably give them just a little bit of translate as his head comes down. You want to feel them kind of stretch a tiny bit. Maybe these ones are pushed down into his head. Might be a tiny bit too much. Uh, and then they can start to react coming back as he settles. These ones go back. Uh, and they probably, maybe from this point, stay back and kind of keep that as their finishing pose. So I'll just copy this frame to my last key. And that should do it. So now just even stepping through these, you can feel the looseness uh, in the ears. It's very subtle, but it definitely starts to loosen up the animation and make it feel more organic just by adding that simple kind of drag and overlap uh, on the ears there. So um, yeah, let's jump over and take a look at the finished animation on the ears.